All right. Looks like we're live yet again. Welcome everybody to the stream. My name is Gabriel Quinn. I am a artist, VizDev artist. I work in the entertainment industry and I make a lot of drawings, a lot of fun characters and environments and stuff. And uh, yeah, welcome to the stream. Welcome to this video. We're just uh, doing what we always do, working on fun projects, having a good time, talking to the chat when they get in here. And uh, yeah, it's just a good time. Yeah, great time. We're working on a personal IP today. Oh, sick. We got Mojo in the chat. Welcome, Mojo. That was fast. Welcome, buddy. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So we're working on an IP. We've been working on the stream for a while. Um, returning viewers will know this is this is Egg, Egg and, Eggs and Benny, the two characters that occupy the kitchen, Benny's kitchen which is what we're gonna be working on today. We're actually gonna be doing the kitchen today. Um, I got <laughs> contacted by a prospective client. They need some environment work. So I figured why not brush up my environment skills today with uh, an IP we love. So let's do it guys. So we have these two characters, the chef with the giant spoon. We got the dragon that's up to no good and who lights the, who lights the, uh, the cauldron on fire. So let's move over to the kitchen, what we have so far. So we have this great illustration, Benny's kitchen. You know, we got the, we got the chef, we got that dragon. They're, they're having a great time. And we have the actual rough sketch of the kitchen, which we came up with on stream. And uh, I think we can take this to, to a better place. I think we can, we can bring it more into reality if we, if we wish. Um, oh, sick. Seth's here as well. Welcome, buddy. Good, good thing you made it, man. Um, Mojo asked, how did the call go? So yeah, the call with the, uh, the potential client went great. It was great. Um, it's always good. I think before talking to a potential client to make sure you're super clear on like who you are, what you want out of the work that you do, what you can offer. And so it was actually great just to, uh, to, you know, remind myself like, like who I am, what I do and all that stuff. So um yeah i'm gonna meet with the ad of the project later which will be great and uh yeah we'll see how things go man we'll definitely see how things go later today so i figured why not work on some environment stuff that i can show <laughs> as well as some of the past stuff i've done there's a lot under nda so what i <laughs> you got to make up for it somehow you know what i mean um but yeah it's gonna make a quick announcement in the the channel discord that we're live. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, no, the comment, great. It's great to talk to a client that like sort of knows, knows who you are and, uh, likes what you do you know what i mean that, that that's good when they come to you for what you do it's a really special time there we go all righty so 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 we got we got the kitchen going on here the original concept for the kitchen was just gonna be basically like uh this sort of circular kitchen area where you've got you know benny's little hidey hole and uh, we've got the kind of like chef's cauldron and whatnot. And we also have, you know, some piping and things, you know, like along the walls and, and everything like that. And we kind of just want to go off of what we have and see what we can do. I mean, maybe we should have prepared a block out. Like, do we want to do a, a block out? Whenever I do a 3D block out, it kind of kills the drawing, to be honest, for me. So I'm almost wondering if it would be better to not do a block out and just to kind of kill it freehand. Do you think we can just kill it freehand? I think we can. Oh, we got everybody's in here. I just checked the chat again. LT Klutzy, Gabriel, hello. Hello, Klutzy, welcome. Kelly says, well, well, well. Well, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. Moth Moth is here. Nabs is here. Let's go. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> okay. I wonder, 
Okay, I think I think the stream is still up. I hope I didn't just accidentally close the stream. Am I still up? Are we still Yeah, we're still up. Okay. <laughs> oh, Massey's in the chat. Welcome, Massey. So Massey is uh, a very dear artist friend. Uh, longtime viewers will remember the first ever and only um, artist st with uh, stream with friends that I did one Friday when I was first starting to stream. Masse joined and Luke as well. And they're both visiting me in New York right now. So Luke is on a plane. Masse is here and uh, she's in the next room. So <laughs> oh, what up, Masse? And Marcus is here. Welcome, Marcus. Man, it's great to see everybody in here. Stream seems to still be good. Yeah, I think I hit like a couple buttons or something and I think like uh, I, I I changed the window But it didn't actually close the stream because everything's going through OBS and whatnot. All right Let's actually get to work because uh, we want to get some stuff done today I think I'm gonna be on for what is it one? Maybe two hours. We'll see. We'll see what goes on um, But yeah, we're gonna be focusing mostly on environment and we're gonna be going for speed here So we want this to feel loose but alive, but clean, but we want it to feel fun and like kind of airy and open. Um, there are going to be some things that maybe we're going to use. We're going to use some, you know, techniques to make sure our line work is clean enough um, because some of these things, like all the tiles and everything, it's going to take a long time to draw each individual tile and not super interested in doing that. So we may you know, figure out uh, ways to get around that, <laughs> at least for like the layout and stuff. So, okay, let's do, let's do, I guess we could, we could in theory do a better version of this as well, to be clear. Um, nah, it's fine as it is. Moth Moth says, in class, so I'll be lurking. Lurk away, lurk away. So I know a lot of people you know, don't necessarily focus on character design. I know I've been very character focused on the stream. Um, some people love environments, love working on environments, doing environments. So yeah, I hope that we get, we get a lot out of the environment side of things today. I'm going to group this and I'm just going to play it safe. And as we always do, duplicate things out, flatten things down. You know, we're allowed to duplicate. We're allowed to do all this stuff. And we want to get back into the mindset of like, what is... What is a kitchen? What's happening here? What's happening narratively? What's happening, you know, in the relationship with the with uh, the broader world as well? Like, the room's purpose should be very clear. Like, a good environment should be very, very self-explanatory, much like a good character. An environment is just a character. If you can do character design, you can do environment design. If you can do environment design, you know, do a little bit of anatomy, and then you can do character design. <laughs> but I think that Anybody who limits themselves to one thing too specifically is kind of holding themselves back a bit from uh, what could be possible with their work. So the staircase, maybe we don't want to have it be super close to the fire. Like I'm kind of in review mode right now, kind of on what we had last time. And I just want to make sure that everything is kind of working still. So definitely one thing to watch out for are perspective inaccuracies so this needs to be a little bit skewed i think maybe distorted oh the transform tool we love the transform tool our dear friend the transform tool zoom out see how that looks yeah it feels good and with drawings like this things don't have to be 100 percent correct i mean once you drop the light down and everything it's like the light does a lot of work. Light and color does a lot of work. So it's easy to fixate on line art, even though the color, the flat colors and the environment and the lighting is really going to save you as well. Um, so don't feel like you have to be pixel perfect a lot of the time. Um, Seth says, I haven't done environments much in a good while. Need to get back to it. Yeah, you know, once in a while, right? If you make it fun. Mojo says, I got to conceptualize a children's book. And I'm in that stage where I'm looking at a blank page, no clear ideas or directions. That's fine. You know, we talked about the blank page last time. If you're conceptualizing for a children's book, it's good to think about, uh, well, slipping into advice mode right now, I guess. It's good to think about, like, what could be happening, you know, or, like, what kind of core 
core journey you want your your character to go through for for your children's book and kind of branch out from that like if you want it to be a story about forgiveness you know maybe there's like you start with a, a scribble about like like oh my gosh like the kid or or who, whoever your character is like so sad because there's like a thing happening and he's like holding a thing and he's holding his little hat and like you know and like and like he's looking down or whatever and maybe no one invited him to play you know they're having fun with the with their ball poink swing You know, and then you figure out the composition and you kind of have like a, a moment, like a shadow moment. You know what I mean? Just like start putting stuff down or whatever. No, just says, I have an idea now. <laughs> it's sick. <laughs> um, Nab says, I agree to that. Currently transition from environments to character and I'm surprised how smooth the transition was. Yeah, it's the same tools of thinking. So if you're a designer then you're going to be applying the same methods to everything that you do. Um, so like you're thinking about what is the purpose of this? If it's a character, you think about what's the purpose of the character narratively and, uh, and um, like function as well. You know what I mean? Like in, in your world and the same with the environment, what is the narrative implication and what is the function implication? You're, you're working backwards from a lot of implications, right? Okay. So, we were kind of jumbled and a little bit messy last time. So we want to think about what we could do here. So let's cut some of the bulk out, you know, some of the scribbly bulk. It might be that we want to show the dragon hutch a little closer. So we already saved a version of this, so we're fine. Maybe the little dragon hutch is actually here so we can see inside, right? Because you want to be able to see it. We want to be able to see our little dragon friend. Sleeping away. Sleeping away. All curled up, all cute. His little head poking out, right? Okay, there's also a bit of an inconsistency with the perspective ellipses we're working off of. We can fix this as well. Like we fixed a few things you want to fix. Yeah, I mean, one way to just get a clean ellipse is literally just to make a circle, fill it with like the light gray, you know, and just kind of pick it out. Transform it and kind of make it fit the perspective you want. That's one way to kind of give yourself a guide. It's just to literally give yourself a guide. And if you're, if it's supposed to be a circle, then you can kind of get an idea for the perspective that you're in. So we want the cauldron to be in the middle of the room. We'll extend it out a little bit so it feels in the middle. And now we're kind of fixing the perspective a bit here, right? Boom, baby. So then in the actual drawing, you can sort of like reset some of these landmarks. And that's something you probably should have done from the beginning, but we were just roughing it in. Giving yourself clear landmarks is really important, I think. So the actual workflow for something like this would be mostly in 3d so what you would probably do is block this out in 3d and then you would uh you would kind of take um you would take essentially the angle that you wanted and then you'd kind of line on top of all the props and the stuff and then you'd color it and then you know apply the lighting or follow the lighting guide that you had in 3d but again we want this to feel very storybook and whimsical so when you're trying to go for a certain aesthetic, 
using some of the more functional methods can actually take you away from your desired effect. So let's do it, man. Let's absolutely do it. So yeah, maybe, maybe eggs hidey hole is over here. Right? That feels already more accurate. Feels already feels better. So with our concentric circle here, there's a lot you can do in Photoshop. Like I know a lot of people love Clip Studio and stuff, but there's there's a lot of um, functional stuff in Photoshop that you know, because like. Clip Studio is great snap to shape tools and stuff, but they're like workarounds and stuff for Photoshop, which we like. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a selection and we are going to modify, pick border, border selection looks like this. We're going to pick what, like four. Yeah, that's enough. Four, we're going to do a new layer, just fill it super easy and it's jank but again we're giving ourselves guides right so then when we want things to become concentric or, or like enter into the middle we can just kind of grab it hold alt and kind of make these tile marks right adjusting for perspective so we'd like bring it up a couple times and actually would we yeah we would Copy that one over, make that smaller. You know, we want enough uniformity, right? Yeah, the biggest rates of change would be farther. So actually the second one would be up higher-ish. We're almost at her inner ring. Yeah, this is gonna help place everything so things feel pretty grounded. You know, we wanna make sure things are even enough, but we don't have to be too obsessive about it. This is like a very jank method, just full disclosure. <laughs> is that good? I don't even know. I feel like actually uh, a better method than this would be much simpler, ironically, which is easy to forget that they're simple methods, man. But hey, this is why we try things out, you know? Yeah, we should have just skewed it from the beginning. <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, also, anyone who has any questions about anything, feel free to ask any narrative questions, world building questions, anything like that, man. We're, we're so open. We love talking about it. It's a good time. 
I'm wondering if we want to do our grid now, like if that would even be better, you know? Hmm, maybe. Sweet. I think it's going to be pretty fun to work on. Haha, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Boom, baby. So we're getting our grid right now. And this is going to make the tiles go so much faster. Like, so much faster. It's jank, but so much, so much, so much, so much faster. That feels good. Do we want to do one more though? Maybe like one more layer, right? We can try Chris, welcome Chris. Yeah, that feels a little better. More of a grid. Sick. Cool. Super low fidelity, but again, this is just a little grid to work off of. You can see the other thing we did and we can really we can just dump it. Not super needed, to be honest. This is all underwork, so once we put all the lines on top, it'll feel super uniform and juicy and delicious, and we're gonna love it. It's gonna be great. So we're going to do skew, which brings things into perspective a bit more. We want things definitely to feel uniform enough, right? Yeah, maybe the room is a little ovally. That's totally fine, too.
Oh, Emmy's here. Welcome, Emmy. Also, welcome, Salmon. Sick. Okay. So, I think a loose grid we can work off of. That's fine. Remember, we're not going for perfection here. Yeah, already feels a lot stronger. We can go in here and we can... Snip away a lot of this stuff. Yo, Emmy says, are we doing environment design today? Yeah, we're doing some environment design. Nothing too crazy. So I'm kind of figuring out how we want to present this. So there were elements to this design that I'm now recalling where it was kind of like, we have sort of like a circular room and uh, yeah, circular, circular room, cauldron in the middle, uh, little bits and bobs and cubbies and hallways kind of going around this room. The spiral staircase was around it. And then there was this like hanging, hanging thing with like big cuts of meat and all these like hanging elements that were interesting. And it was like a, like chained up and there was natural light coming down from the sky and also the the hearth light from the fire underneath. So it was like a lit space. Um, but yeah, with some fire, some warmth, all that good stuff. We want to bathe it in some beautiful warm light, right? Are you guys talking about Steven Zapata in the chat? Dude, Steven's great. Really, really nice guy, incredible guy. Um, I've had Thai food with him once. We haven't had a chance to, or I haven't had a chance to connect with him too much yet, but he's a great guy. Exceptional illustrator and designer. And he's got like a really great outlook. I feel really, really, whenever, whenever I heard his perspectives or got to speak with him, it was just very, very, uh, I felt very, very, very much in agreement with him. Very cool, cool dude. So, so yeah, so this is the kind of idea we wanted to have this sort of vertical, a pretty vertical space. Um, so now that we're here, let's think about what we had before. We had some shelves back here that we're going to have some cool, fun écoutrement on top and whatnot. Um, we were going to have some cool, some cool, uh, like baskets, bags, all this stuff, like, so let's kind of, we want to preserve some of the grid. So we're going to make a copy of it that's not really removed too much. So we can just have that. And then we're going to have a version that we can kind of remove a little bit so we can make room for some cool sketch stuff. So we're going to, that's not anything. Yeah. So we had a bunch of veggies in this corner and I think we want to actually make it legit. So functionally, we want to feel like this space has function. You know what I mean? So the chef, he's stirring the pot. And then when he's not stirring the pot, like, what is he doing? You know what I mean? He's like, I'm thinking very like Ratatouille-esque. We, we have the pot, you know, and, and he's like running around doing, doing chef stuff and he's throwing things in, you know what I mean? He's like throwing things in the pot. So there's like stations and stuff around and like stoke the flame and the fire comes out and it goes, Bwah! and all this thing. Right. So we want to make sure that that kind of stuff is, is available to the imagination of the viewer, you know? Like you want a lot of the times with environment design or just with design in general, you want to give your audience the opportunity to be creative and to discover and to be like, oh, wait, that's that. Or that could be like this. You don't want to give it all to them on a silver platter and be like, hey, look, this is this. You want to leave a little bit up to the, the viewer, trust their intelligence, because if there was ever an intelligent audience in the world, it's now. Man, people care a lot, and people are looking very closely at things. They care a ton. Um, big baskets. And the what not? The big baskets, yes. Yeah, maybe next time we'll do some environment design for uh, the Sky Pirates. That'll be really fun. We could do some at the end, actually, of today's session if we wanted. Um, 
So we're just going to do block outs because we want to do a lot with the line art. We want to we want to make some serious headway on this design today. <laughs> Emmy says, OMG, yes. Does he get a little more warm and happy when he cooks in comparison to when he to how he usually acts? Definitely. I think the chef I think the chef character is is in his element when he's when he's cooking and like totally just uh loving life and whatnot. You know, I think I think that's totally within reason. Definitely to be expected for sure. So we'll do since this side is kind of closed off, what we'll do is we'll make this zone over here kind of like uh, the flower sacks and stuff are kind of spilling out of this sort of cabinet, whatnot, doorway, you name it. Um, and we'll try and come up with like a interesting sort of hallway scenario leading out, you know? So the idea is that if a character is walking in and like the doors fly open, you'll see like this great grandiose. We had a keyframe for it too. We had a great, we had a great like, bah, 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 bah. you know, like you walk in and like the dragon's spitting fire and you're like, what's happening? And he's like, go faster. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we've got baskets of stuff. Let's do some square baskets too. We'll make it happen. Oh man. I think I'm in yet another group chat right now. My phone's blowing up. I don't know about you guys, but the second I'm added to a group chat, I'm like, silence, silence. Go away, silence. Strange. Simmons says, and he's quoting, make the environment lived in is the advice David Finch gave in a stream he did. Make it, don't make it look too clean or in place and, and make a perspective grid. Yeah, you definitely need to know where things are going for sure. Mundaneity is a powerful tool, you know, like whenever they do like a bedroom of like a character, like, that's an art in and of itself, man. Like, you know, if you look at kind of the Spider-Verse movies and stuff, like, everything they have kind of on the walls, everything they have kind of around is very intentional and deliberated. And, like, every object fights for a spot. Like, is this worth it? What does this say about the character? Why is it here? And if you have an empty room, that's an empty character, man. Like, really. Like, there's a great example of that in, um, you know, uh, Princess and the Frog, the Disney one. The last 2D animated Disney film. R.I.P. 2D animation. Oof. Please, I hope to God we see a resurgence. I can't take any more of this Raya and the Last Dragon looking stuff, man. More 2D, more 2D, please, please. So, so yeah, so. <laughs> um, So with her character in The Princess and the Frog, like in that opening scene, her room is so sparse. It's like very sparse. The only thing is a picture of her dad, her and her dad, like hairbrush, tip jar, you know, empty. Like a lot of stuff was empty in the room, but that was by design. She never spends time in her room. She's in and she's out. Apron, couple clothes, nothing too crazy. And again, by design. Cool, cool, cool. So you have baskets of stuff. Baskets of stuff. Baskets of stuff. Cool. Let's 
Nab says, I think 2D is slowly coming back in the form of indie projects. Yeah, I mean, I hope you're right, man. I, I, I have been known to say that as well. I think, I think people have been saying that and hoping for that for the past few years. And, you know, schools like uh, Gobelin, Goblins in, in uh, Paris and other schools who are teaching 2D, Sheridan, you know, like there are some really great indie projects happening. Um, some of my friends actually are doing an indie 2D film. I can't say anything about it, but it's, but uh, things are getting greenlit and they're getting made, which is nice. It would just be nice to see some real incredible feature, right? Or like stuff like uh, Love, Death, Robots. Some of the 2D projects from that were fantastic, really fun. Definitely want to see more more from that. But yeah, there are some great studios like The Line and some some great people doing good stuff. Kelly says, in another Discord, I said I don't like The Incredibles because I prefer 2D and got so much flack. You know, flack, flack's fine, you know. Sometimes you get flack, but just difference in opinion, you know. Like, the first Incredibles was great. Story-wise, it was fantastic and fun. It was a fun movie. But, like, aesthetically, I'm not, like, enchanted by The Incredibles. Like, if I could watch The Incredibles or, like, a Ghibli film, it would be entirely up to, like what kind of experience I want to do. I want to be enchanted in like a world of beauty and, and, you know, creativity and wonder and majesty, or do I want to be in like, you know, story, wild superhero story mode or something. Who knows? Let's see. Let's see. Mojo says, I can appreciate 3D and it's such a technically difficult process in my experience, but 2D always looks better. It's just, well, 2D gives you access to things narratively that you cannot possibly do. Like, uh, like, I don't know if you got, well, Gendy Tartakovsky comes to mind, like Samurai Jack, the 2000, the 2000, uh, three, six, 2000, 2003. 2007? I can't remember. But the the OG Star Wars The Clone Wars, 2D animated by Gendy Tartakovsky. Man. Like, that's the most Star Wars any Star Wars content has ever been. You know, like, that that is, like, actually Star Wars. But more so than the original trilogy, in my opinion. Like, it actually is that, you know? 2D, you just get access to so much more than you get with 3D. Um... Emmy says Disney wants to make more money by doing live action and trying new things, but they don't realize just how much we could, we would pay to see old Disney come back. Yeah. Every niche audience is always like, I, they would get my money. And it's like you, would they get middle America? <laughs> would they get the entirety of China? Probably not. You know, <laughs> but, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Simon says, I have friends on the other side. That was all 2D too. That song was just, that song was awesome too. The VA did great. Yeah, the Goblin students are sick. They're making great stuff. Seth says, I went to a two-week summer class at Goblin's past summer. It was a great experience. Oh, it's so cool. Let's go. Simon says, I will rewatch Vampire Hunter. I didn't know it was one of the last 2D films from the studio. I wish I had a call. Oh, the characters look so good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true, uh, Mojo. Digital is looking kind of stop motion. Well, people are starting to realize that like going for fidelity doesn't necessarily make the story experience better. That's why Pixar, man, people are not really enchanted by Pixar like they used to, you know, like not even close. All right, let's do like a cool rug here. Didn't know I'd spark a 2D, 3D debate today. <laughs> let's do a couple cool like rugs just kind of around this area with all the 
baskets and bits and bobs and and whatnot, crates of this and that and delicious veg and whatnot. <laughs> Yo, welcome Martin Bayes. Damn, popping off in the chat. Let's go. HG as well. We got all the homies. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Welcome back to the stream. All right. So any environment like this where we have many small objects, we want to remember that scale is important. Scale is really important. Um, and also that we want some things to really stand out. Right. So while we were doing some sketches on Tuesday, we decided that we wanted to have like a giant bottle of olive oil, like a big old bottle of olive oil. And we want to make sure that maybe that's like close at hand, like like a very key thing that catches the eye. It's like green. It's illumined by light. Like we want it to be a fun motif, like a fun thing that we see. Maybe we put it on the top of the shelf. Maybe we put it on the ground, just like right here, like just a big old bottle of, of olive oil. You know what I mean? Like, where do we want that key prop to be? These things do definitely matter. We could have it be, hmm. I don't think I've seen the animation film Vampire Hunter. But you guys make it sound really good. I'll have to check it out for sure. So little things like the shadow underneath a bookcase or, or like a ingredients case like this. Just look at the little bit of the room left underneath. That stuff matters, man. That stuff really matters. Let's do a time check. All right. We're 40 minutes in. Haven't made a whole lot of progress. We developed this side a lot, though. Definitely in the comfort zone right now. So maybe we want to continue on. Let's do. Let's continue this pipe along here as well. Make sure that all this stuff is looking really fun and juicy. We're still going to keep the line art pretty loose when we do the like clean up. But again, we want to just make sure that there is a home for all the color and light that we're going to do. We want to make sure there's like a cohesive home for that. Also, there's a, something a little bit off about the tiles now. I made an edit and I think I want to make sure that we're good. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. We maybe want to have the staircase splaying out instead of being right next to the fire. So maybe as it turns here, swerves down. That way it's inviting even to the viewer, you know? Yeah, a lot of this perspective, we're definitely kind of fudging a little bit, but that's fine. Again, wonderment over hyper-technicalness for this. Because, yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'll definitely check out Vampire Hunter for sure. And he says, please make sure Big Old Benny has enough flat surface to chop his vegetables with his comically large utensils. You know, like, I've been thinking about that, and I'm, I almost wanted to do, like, like, another, like, raised section or, like, another whole, like, area just for chopping, like, a, with a big butcher's block, like, a big old butcher's block. Like, we could even give him space in theory we could even do like a little a raised section Benny deserves this <laughs> Sandman says, if you watch Vampire Hunter, you'll be drawing handsome, tall vampire swordsmen in black clothes and cool hats for months. That just sounds like me already. So, so you know. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see. Let's see. So, we got Egg's Hole over here. He's hanging out in there. I'm not trying to be too precious with the perspective, but we do want things to be like a l read a little, little. We want, we want things to read well, so I think this would be a little more. Yeah. There we go. That's feeling good. Nice. I love that idea that like Benny deserves this. It's like, yes, he absolutely fruitly does. Yeah, the idea, the fun, the fun idea of an open space is that you can just like absolutely fill it up. So we want the white tile to be the buffer for attention, right? Want that to be like the relief. So remember, if we're in perspective, if we raise a prop, we have to be able to place it back in space. So if he has a big old table like this guy, then that's fine. And what's fun is you can place a big old knife stuck in here big old big old knife twing another big old chef's knife here too might as well right have like a million chopped little things on the table whole bunch of stuff I like the idea that you constantly see him go like bing 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 He's like always going around, you know? <laughs> Emmy says, I can imagine Benny getting accidentally singed by the flame and doing his little frustrated chef glare. Exactly. Of course, of course. It's classic. It's an absolute classic, truly, truly a classic. Hot, 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 hot.
Yeah, I was actually surprised when I started working in the industry on like animation productions and pitch decks and stuff that like you'd be surprised a lot of the guys that do layout and environment concept for animation like the perspective isn't always like a hundred percent because when they eventually build everything in 3d like that'll obviously conform to perspective in reality but you know the layouts i was really surprised at how loose some of these guys work And it makes sense because it's so not necessary to be so insane with fidelity. And it's always good to learn perfect perspective so you can imitate it closely. But I was definitely impressed and very surprised at how how uh, much kind of like leeway there was sometimes. All right. The flaring out uh, stare isn't super doing it for me. Let me try this again. So we have stairs, bing, 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 bong, 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 We just want to make sure the stairs are like making sense. Like they're, well, it could honestly be that they descend a little bit quicker, quicker than we think. And it could be that like, it ends like right here. Because we want it to feel like he's opening up and like everything is kind of revolving around the cauldron in the space, you know? So like he's he's running down, doing stuff, running back up and doing doing all this stuff. But uh who knows? Sandman says, can it be a gag the dragon thinks he's not pri fireproof? Like the dragon like is unaware? Or like he's afraid of fire, he doesn't know that he's fireproof? That could be fun. Yeah, I'm trying to play around with more or less steep. Like, of course, the grounded design part of my brain is like, ah, it needs to make perfect sense and it needs to be, it needs to be like, make make a whole, make, make more sense and blah, 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 blah. But it doesn't really have to be anything, to be honest. Like, I could even move him over here. And that way, you can still have the same shape for the staircase, but it's just opening up over here. Nah, the original shape we had was so nice, though. I think we need to keep it i think we need to keep it and there's a couple things we can do like um no this is this is fine this actually feels fine but we are gonna bring back the old staircase and we're gonna make it work yeah like it's just such a strong shape i think i think there's just an issue of scale so we've made it too big at the bottom because benny's not that big And those stairs will make more sense when we actually draw them out for sure. That kind of fixes it. Cool. Need a bucket for all the mush and weirdness that's next to the chopping thing. You know, all like the off cuts and stuff. You can just swipe it on in there. So we'll wipe it on in. Um, okay, what else? What else? Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, like there could be some fun and narrative potential there, Sam. Man, that's a cool idea. We could try and think of some story scenarios where that would be like relevant and like have some punch. Yo, Lashy, welcome to the chat, buddy. Okay, we'll do the, all the bottles up here. That'll be like fun. Yeah, if you guys are liking the stream and you, you know, want to see more streams in the future and stuff, definitely subscribe. Definitely like the stream for sure. Helps more people like you find it. People who need a uh, some company while they sketch, <laughs> someone to rant at them about animation and a design, you know. You never know, man. You never know. Sam has been simping on Lashy's art on Instagram. Dude, Lashy's great. Lashy's got great art. Go Lashy. If you want to join, hey, if you want to join me and Lashy and a bunch of other wonderful, incredible artists for our for our three times a week character design challenge where we design a character in one hour, you can join the Patreon and join the Discord. And you can hop on Discord and do the challenge with us. We did a really fun one last time, American. I can show some of the ones we did last time. We did a... <laughs> Man, I'm like remembering all of them. We did some fun ones where uh, the prompt was, it was two words, random words that we generated and we decided to do it. It was bang and peep. So like I wanted to do like a rocket sky pirate flying on some gliding thing, scouting out, you know, like he's, he's peeping on the, uh, on the enemy and he's flying around. Lashy did this based self portrait. <laughs> Nabs did this great drawing of two characters named bang and peep. This is adorable. Making that cactus sweat. And Ayub did a really cool sound guy, which is sick. Called his guns bang and peep. Emoji this great chick <laughs> singed hair it's so awesome and kelly i love this one that kelly did two characters named bang and peep as well and they're like you know charlatan performers they're so wonderful colin did this great robot sniper demolitionist and then we did another uh another one where we had like just a bunch of adjectives and only 15 minutes to, de to design a character so there are some great ideas. This great snowman one. Ayub did this awesome bear. And then I did a, uh, a duelist guy who's got some attitudes flipping somebody off. But I did like a fun duelist. And this one was very diverse. Lash did this <laughs> this great design. <laughs> Almost reminds me of like Louis Zabeda's work. Patricia did this wonderful cat catching a creature. Kelly did this great character. Seemingly got some poison, some nefarious activity. And then Aeb always updates his design so he like did another pose, kind of made more sense, brought it to life a bit more, which was super fun, and put a slash on his other bear character, which was really great. So yeah, if you want to join us, we do that every we do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We do the character design challenge for just, just an hour, a little bit longer, and anybody can join um through the Patreon. It's just three bucks a month. Join us for all of our sessions. It's like a focused you know, collaborative classroom setting. It's not like a, it's not like a, uh, I'm not like an instructor or anything. It's, it's very much, we're all getting better together. So yeah, 
That's cool. Super cool. All right, let's keep going on this guy. Man, I don't... Uh, I don't think we'll be able to do line art for him. We'll see. We'll see. Ah, we'll definitely see. Man. Yeah, they were really fun. We're all in this together. So true, Nabs. We really are. Is that a dab emoji? Banned. Emmy says, oh, when's the brush pack coming? <laughs> oh, man. That's a great question. Soon, guys. Soon. I'm so sorry. I've had, like, a bunch of, uh, like, client stuff come up, life stuff. You know, haven't had a chance to package it all. It's not crazy. It's it's the sketch brush I'm working with right now. I had the sketch brush I love that I made. Um, and then it's, like, a hard round, pretty much. Hard round, another pencil for line art and stuff for more, more designy line art for people who like bold lines, which is sometimes necessary. That one I have to modify a bit too, so it has some nice flow to it. Um, oh, dude, take care, man. Enjoy walking, Lashy. So good for you. But yeah, brush pack is coming soon. It's still in development. I need like a couple more brushes for it to kind of like justify putting it out there, you know? So just a couple more. Then we'll be good. All right. How are we feeling about the levels here? I feel like we need some stuff that's maybe like a little higher up, like something happening here, maybe. Maybe this is where we have our our butcher's corner. up yawn right so the advantage here and something uh, an idea I had before was that like what if this would be like a wall here so this we would somehow need to get up high but the idea is that there would also be um There'd also be like a section like above Egg's little place for like smoking meat. Because like when he sleeps, there'd be like smoke going up. So we would want to include a cool section up there. And he says, no rush, just curious, the chance to play around with them. <laughs> yeah. I'll, try, I'll tell you what, I'll try to get the brushes. I'll try to get like a working brush pack that people can start playing around with today. And uh, I'll, you know, it's kind of like a beta anyway. So I'll, I'll make it available, the beta available for free for the for all the patrons and stuff. I'll check it up on the Patreon. Anybody can, can go get it. Yes. Salmon says, does he have a place to cook simple things like an egg or some tea? You know, I was thinking about that too, like, like, uh, it'd be great if there was like an oven, like an oven and a stove, you know, like, a. the cauldron is definitely the center point point. Right. Um, but we do need other apparatus, don't we? Mojo says, I've been using the basic brushes for years now. I feel like I should try some new brushes. It's good. You know, like, uh, a lot of people are like, you don't need anything but hard round, only do hard round. You'll learn the most if you do hard round. And it's like, yeah, you'll learn a lot. And it's great to learn a lot for sure, especially from working with hard round. You'll you'll get a ton out of it. You'll get a lot of mileage. It'll be great. You know, you'll learn a, you'll learn a lot. I learned a lot from doing hard round only for a while. 
definitely go through your phases of doing hard round only but there's some things you can only get with uh other brushes and for the things you can only get then it's really fun it's like super fun like for instance my like goblins um that i drew for uh my little goblins ip <laughs> i'll pull up a couple so you guys can see like the only way i drew that was because of the tooth on that brush and it's almost just basic hard round but there's just enough tooth that it's like pow let's find it let's find our goblin boys This is so fun. I should do some more. But yeah, like this guy. Whoa. Like, there's just. Oh gosh, I hate when it does that. It like scales weirdly. I'll just bring it into Photoshop. You can see it. Like there's just enough tooth on the brush to where it's not like perfectly round and that wobbly edge just makes the style possible. It makes it like, well, it feels traditional. It feels kind of wobbly and funky and gray and it's just, it's just so fun. All right, so as we're designing this more, um, it's definitely, the scope is definitely increasing for this guy. So I'm thinking that we're going to shift our goals a little bit today. And instead of going for a perfect finish or a line art finish, we're actually just going to keep running because it's better to polish something really good than to polish something like preemptively, you know? So we're going to not polish preemptively. We're going to do a good job. Ooh, I have to sign NDAs. <laughs> remember that <laughs> cool 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 he's a cute little goblin yeah dude the goblins i've been trying a lot of the goblins lately i think i'm gonna do in the next couple years like a a short goblins children's book or something for fun, you know? Make it kind of like a little, kind of like shit posty, you know? Something funky. Okay, so if we have the chop station, we have all this stuff, we have, you know, this, this, and that, like, we can put the doorway here, maybe? That way we can use more of the space. Put the doorway there. We've got some space over here, you know, we could put a Put a scrangly stove here. Six burner stove. We could put, yeah, that's feeling nice. We want to have this great rich feeling in front. And then we want an oven too, eh? Definitely want an oven. So, You know what? We can have the door actually be quite small. It doesn't need to be a big door at all. Little door into a big kitchen, you know? It's kind of fun. Doesn't even need to be that crazy. Go goblin mode. Buddy, I'm goblin mode every day of my life. I go goblin mode all the time. Everything I do, I'm a goblin. We'll have a stove maybe we'll put the stove over here because you want to be able to see the oven from the angle so like i know you shouldn't really design to be like 
but we're just we're just doing it for fun for funsies for funzels an epic six burner here we got like a big a big old oven Like big doors. Hmm, we want the oven to be visually very like powerful, so maybe maybe we hold off there. We could put eggs hidey hole kind of back here. We could put the oven like here. We want it to almost feel like a forge, like a big, big old oven. industrial oven hmm all right we can put that here so we'll move it back The oven can have like it can be like a sectional oven. They have like the kind of big doors that kind of stick out. Okay, true old timey ovens looked looked different. They looked like yeah, we want we want an old timey oven. Yeah, we absolutely want an old timey oven. Look at this. Look at this butte. We want this. We definitely want that for sure. So do we even have a stove? Is that even a thing we have? Or like, how did they make eggs back in the day? What'd they have before the gas stove? pre-gas stove is there gas i guess there can be gas in this world there can be gas it's allowed we'll do gas but we'll do like an old brick oven that's what we'll do that, that can be a fine a fine thing so for the oven we want it to be maybe a little set back in the wall you know we want it to have great this great con this uh domed shape to it it's a great shape truly have a bit that kind of sticks out so we're just sketching this in we can we can refine this later so we're just blocking this in right now right we have this zone and then we have two layers of brick so we're just loosely using this for reference nothing too nothing too fancy bring 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 Ha 
How do they work? I guess you'd light wood on the inside and just stick it in. Cool. Simple enough. Sick. That was easy. Put a nice big old lip on it. Nice little shelf vibe. Sweet. Sorry, I've been looking at ovens. I haven't checked the chat. <laughs> Oops. Let's take a look. Emmy says, honestly, once this page is finished, it will probably be one of my favorites. It's so fun and cute, and there's so much to look at. Yeah, you really want it to be like a candy shop for people. Some old stoves were like cast iron type stove where you made a fire inside. We could do that. We could do a cast iron stove vibe. Um, hey, you best to go take a nap, buddy. Nap it up. Cool. Enjoy your nap, man. That'll be great. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. Yeah, so, like, stream updates. Life is good. Stream's been fun. Um, yeah, it's been just great. Live engagement. Everybody's been really, really wonderful. Um, We've been making progress towards our goals, which is cool. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to hit that four thousand public watch hour goal, which is insane. Um, because I'm not, I'm not really doing anything crazy, clickbaity, and I'm just doing stream vods. So hitting that goal just with stream vods is really hard. But we're close. We're close to halfway. There's like sixteen hundred watch hours on the channel right now, which is unreal. It's so cool. We just started streaming like a couple months ago. Like that's really, that's really, really cool. Ooh, Pernish Kate says, hello everyone. I'm a lurk as usual. Welcome, welcome. Seth says, I appreciate the lack of clickbait. Oh, good, nice. Cool. Thanks, Sam, man. Appreciate that knowledge, knowledge. So there's a couple options we can do. We could do big cobblestone texture walls where like we have like a lot of little stones, a lot of big stones kind of making up the the inside of this interior. We could do that for all the walls and stuff. That could be kind of fun. Be fun to play with that medieval feel versus the tile floor. Like that feels pretty nice. You know, or we could go with a brick, like a brick to wall kind of vibe or just placed stones. You know, we could do either. Ah, we got a good buddy Prashan in the chat. Welcome, Prashan. <laughs> Prashan says, what brush do you use? As if you'd ever use a brush in Photoshop, Prashan. Prashan is an incredible 3D artist. Definitely, definitely go check out Prashan's work. I'm pretty sure if you just type Prashan into Instagram, you'll probably see his work. Probably. <laughs> I bet, I bet, dude. Literally. It's cool being like the first result. Like when when I meet people kind of on the street or whatever and they're like, oh, you know, oh, you're on Instagram or whatever. Like what's your, let me get you on Instagram. Like I just type Gabriel Quinn. It's like, boom, right there. Let's go. It's kind of sick. <laughs> I 
Dude, when are you going to do a YouTube channel, Prashan? When do we get the Prashan, Prashan YouTube experience? When are we going to get all your 3D wisdoms? Lord knows I need him, that's for sure. Good grief. Oh, also Massey is here. <laughs> Super cool. Prashant says, not a drawer, but this perspective seems hard and you're killing it. Hey, thanks, man. You know, working completely 2D, no 3D is like, uh, it's rewarding. I'll say that. It's really fun. Definitely need zones. So we have like veggies all here. Veggies all here. We need we need definitely need like a meat section. We just need it. We need one for sure. Alright, we'll put the oven closer. That feels better. I feel like we need a cool like a meat chopping zone here, like on top or something really cool. Right? Or do we just fit everything around? the cauldron because that's another thing we could totally do we could just go hard and make it all work Sean said, maybe soon you're inspiring me. Yeah, you should do it, YouTube, dude. You got all the knowledge. Pranish Kit says, 3D artists are awesome. I salute you. I only read it for two years in school, and I was struggling with topology so hard. Dude, topology is hard. Simon says, being able to draw has given me a lot, a lot of misplaced confidence when it comes to 3D. <laughs> yeah, 3D is a whole other deal, man. It's a whole other deal. You think it's one way and uh whew, man hump you'll get humbled real quick I'll tell you that much maybe we'll place the dragon's den like a little higher off the ground like it's a little i think it's all kind of one ledge like a little buffer column or something here. If we show the full sprawl, okay, what's gonna, what'll happen if we sacrifice? Oh, I'm receiving a call, guys. I'm just gonna quickly mute myself and uh i'm gonna take this call really quick that call was epic it was just really loud really fast uh mandarin so Let's go. We're Bing Chilling, guys. Straight up. Straight up. So. 
yeah, what happens if we sacrifice this vertical element here? Because... Mm, oh, it was such a strong element, though, right? Like, like something feels off immediately when I remove it. It needs it. It really does need it, doesn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Classic 3D, you guys. The only advantage this would give is if it like I had like another plane here to kind of make like a cool little thing with like meat and stuff all up here and everything like that, but I don't think it works. I think having this element really is strong. Especially foreground, like we could we could really make it we could really sell it, like uh have things hanging in front. And it would like it would look good if we did like something here that wasn't taking up any room, you know. Like a ribeye, like a big old giant ribeye. It does frame the scene nicely. It's a great element. It was a good idea too. I was really stoked about it when I had it. So, okay, so we'll keep that. We'll we'll keep this for now and we'll add some other elements too as we go, you know, so that it's not so lonely up there. But we do need a zone where we have more stuff I think we'll just make it here. If he's already cutting stuff over here. Because really there's nothing stopping us from, let's just make quickly make a duplicate of this. We don't, I don't think we need the image anymore. <laughs> um, nothing stopping us from shrinking it a little bit down and using some of this space on the page. Like there's really nothing stopping us from doing that. So let's, let's try. We can put like the big fish tail that we were designing over like over there, like we could flop it over the edge. So it's coming over. Have like the head just that's like a fun foreground element right and we can put like the big knife there for sure like a fun juxtaposition to the other knife you know or like uh uh a repetition of the other knife. Oh, Salmon's got a BRB. No worries. No worries, no worries. 
All right, let's do a little time check. Where are we at? Where are we at? I said, where are we at? 226. Okay. Oh, we're making good time. Making great time. Hour and 30 in. Nice. Got about half an hour more. So maybe we want to make sure that the drawing is pretty strong before we before we call it today. Maybe we need to give some space over here for like some of these th thicker elements, giant fish. That's funny. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Oh, wait, it would be this side, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Let's get rid of the grid again. We're like slowly erasing out the grid as we go so that we can kind of like reveal and give things the space and presence they need. So, okay, Fr let's get fresh eyes for a second. So I don't know if you guys do this when you're concepting. This is very good to do, in my opinion, when you're working is to really take a deep breath. And kind of go like, okay, what am I doing? You know, let me step out for a second and really look at this for a sec. You know, when I look at this clearly, it's feeling a little empty over here, which is not bad. That's fine. But let's think for a second on what we could do over there. So I'm thinking either some like oven soot scuff obviously we'll have the soot marks from egg shooting his fire into the thing ah, this needs to be lower i thought it was going to work higher but it needs to be lower but i did like the partition though the partition was nice like the interesting kind of element here that was that was pretty good i like that so we can keep that Okay, so let's continue on with this kitchen. What are we doing here? Obviously, we got to hang some pots and pans over this. Classic. We'll make that look better <laughs> when we when we finish it. The chef's looking a little small to me. I think he needs to be a little bigger. Maybe everything's a little big though. We can shrink some stuff down here. 
Remember, scale is really important. We want to make sure scale's feeling good. Okay. So this is just for me, but I'm gonna go in on these tiles and I'm gonna make them a little irregular. So I'm gonna add some some elements here. What are we working at? Let's let's do There we go. We're gonna do little diamond sectionals to connect each tile. That's really nice. You may think to yourself, that's going to take so much time. That's going to be blah, blah, blah. And like, yeah, it is going to take so much time, but we're just going to power through because the quality that we want to hit, the wonderment we want to instill in the viewer, this is part of it and it's worth it, right? Are they going to lie flat or slightly raised and domed? The tiles? Mm, you might see a, a hair of an edge sometimes, but they're going to be pretty darn flat. Oh man, this is going to be fun to clean up. This is going to take like a whole day though, but it'll be worth it. It's a really beautiful environment. This with our character illustration is going to be a very powerful page for the portfolio, I think. Very grounding, just very clear. Just a chef, his dragon, and their kitchen. And that's it. Wow, look how much progress we made there. It's great. That's great. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. I love that. getting like a weird vertigo just from doing this. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Let's just check. Wow. Do you see how much that's added already? Like that's, that's a lot. Like that adds a lot to the space in like a really beautiful way. Like already. That's great. It's really great. Just gives such a great feel to the space. That tiled floor. Can't wait to see them, the colors and all the cracks and aging. Yeah, man, that'll be really fun to do. Ooh, Lorem Epsom based. Lorem really does Epsom.
Ooh, Salmon's back. Let's go. Welcome, buddy. All right, we're just going to do some lines, see how they feel. So we're going to do some lines just on the space just to kind of see how certain vertical lines feel. Sometimes just putting lines down kind of helps you to figure out what you want. Right? It helps have that verticality so you can decide like okay like is this actually going to be domed here is it going to be domed like farther in than we think that's got a nice feel right we could do that having a nice dome design that already makes it feel very cozy like cozy vibe which is nice we do like cozy we like it a lot um, and we can still have that natural light coming down in fact we gotta start thinking about this chain here it's gonna be chain 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 and then like that right being held up yeah the dome feels pretty good she <laughs> lorem on my <laughs> ipsum till I delore. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend would love that. <laughs> she speaks Latin. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's messed up guys that's messed up yeah i'm just sending good vibes to everybody in the chat today i hope you guys are doing really really well i hope if you guys are drawing along that the drawings are fun and engaging and you're not letting yourself get stressed out if things are a little hard you know everybody's doing such a great job i'm like sincerely and like very proud of everybody who like makes makes significant and serious efforts in their work Good, good for you and like good for keep going good for keeping going truly it's not easy trust me i know i know it's not easy guys You guys are awesome. I'm writing lore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Write the lore. Lore is great. Mojo said, I've been feeling feeling a bit discouraged with the art stuff. But this community helps so much. I'm glad to be a part of it. Dude, I'm so glad, man. Like, art, I was talking about this with my girlfriend who's not an artist. And I was talking to her and I was like, art is so hard because the learning curve for drawing, painting, illustration, design, everything. The learning curve is so steep. 
and it's so high and you have to work so hard just to make your stuff not look like garbage. And there's something really significant that a lot of people miss and pass up on, which is that if you're, let's say you want to get better at guitar, right? I play guitar. I love guitar. You want to get better at guitar. You're practicing. You make mistakes, off notes, whatever. It sounds bad, right? But then it's gone. The next day you pick it up and the last time you practice, you're not even really thinking about it. It's gone. But then with art, you put a drawing on a page and that drawing stays there. It just stays there. All your mistakes, they just stay there, right? And uh, sometimes you go back and you're like, oh, that actually was pretty good. Or I don't know why I was upset about that. Or I didn't like that or blah, blah, blah. But a lot of the time it's like, you're like, damn, this is not good. And I'm like upset about it and I feel bad and I know it's not the quality that I want to be hitting as an artist. But here's the thing, man. It's like you go to the gym, you can be like, I really, I really want to be able to lift 800 pounds. And you're like, I really want to be able to do that. I, I should be, I should be able to do that. And it's like, you just, you literally just can't. And because art is subjective and strange and weird, a lot of the times We forget that when we're learning and as we're developing, you just can't. Like, you just can't make a perfect painting off the bat, right? You can't just, you can't just be incredible immediately. It's, it, it, that literally cannot happen. Michelangelo, master painter of the Renaissance, burned all of his development sketches, all of his practice sketches. You will see no student work of Michelangelo, zero. And when asked why by his student, by his assistant, he said, they can never know how hard I worked to make it look so easy. That's a paraphrase, but it's true. It takes so much work, you know? And like uh, a beginner may tune into this stream and be like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. You know, that he's drawing in perspective, he's drawing in this and blah, 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 and everything like that. And it's like, man... I'll tell you right now, all I see right now as I'm drawing is like, I see so many mistakes. I see so many mistakes and I, and I really see like how far I am from my goal personally as well. So it's like, it's always shifting and always moving. Pranish Kit says, I'm drawing a random meme from Pinterest because I'm trying to do daily drawings and there was nothing on my mind. That's good. (laughs) You guys are funny. Emmy says, every single piece we make is personal, even if we don't intend it to be. That's true. You are always a part of the art that you make. As scary as that is, it is true. All right, let's take stock of where we're at. This is a good feeling drawing. There's some cool stuff happening here. This kitchen feels pretty nice. I think it's feeling pretty good. We'll definitely have to, I think, extend it out a bit, you know, like a a little bit out. Um... I'm thinking maybe the door is actually like under this pipe. Like we'll we'll make the door like under the pipe so that you kind of sneak in this way. That's kind of fun. So you step in and you see this like crazy spiral staircase. You see the stove, the oven in the background, the little dragon spitting fire into the thing. You know, and you like you walk in and you're surrounded by all these things, all these vegetables. So it's good framing for like keyframe stuff, right? Some good progress was made. It's true. We made a lot of great progress. If you look at our original, let's see. From this to this, that's a lot. A lot of development. We cleaned up a lot, fixed a lot of the perspective, kind of figured out the vibe of the room, what we kind of wanted it to be. And uh, I think we made great progress today, really. Utterly, truly great progress. <laughs> nice. Let's do a little time check. 245. All right. You know, before we get too stuck on this, I think uh, I think we can, for fun, since I'm pretty sure this is about as far as we're going to get for now, the only thing left, I think, is to do some, some big, like, wompy chompy cuts of stuff. Like big cuts of meat and like I 
Uh, I can't just be sitting there though, right? That's like strange. Salmon says, everyone like the stream. The algorithm will judge this stream based on likes. Lol. Hey, if you like the stream, definitely leave a like. And uh, you can comment on the video too after it goes up. Or even right now, you can drop a comment. That always helps. Um, I should have I should have disguised it. Wait, let me redo it again. Okay, guys. Don't forget to annihilate that like button. And tell me in the comments, are, are you? Are you? Uh, <laughs> God. Are you in Minecraft right now? If you're not in Minecraft, tell me in the comments. And if you are in Minecraft, don't forget to tell me in the comments. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're just not in Minecraft? Dude, you have to comment that. Comment that on the video. Bit of an aggro chain, I think. And rhythm games, nice. Life is Roblox, DJ Call it. So true. Okay, final thing we want to make sure is that the scale feels good. So honestly, personally, it's going to sound crazy, but I kind of want the space to feel a little more grand. Um, so what we're going to do actually is we're going to take our cauldron and our chef. Oops. We're going to make them like just a, just a little bit smaller. Boop. A little bit smaller. A little bit smaller and I want to make the stove a little bit smaller the oven I want the oven to be a little bit bigger actually eggs hole a little bit smaller and all this stuff here just be a little eensy bit smaller. Just eensy or weensy bit smaller. This kitchen definitely needs one of those tall ladders with wheels that can roll around from shelf to another shelf. Could do. I mean, we have 
we have the uh, the ladder here. We could make it a rail ladder for fun. So he's wheeling around. That way, actually, we could just continue this wall of spices, and that'll just be like a whole thing. You know, we if, if we're going to do that, then we want it to feel like uh, the potion room, Fairy Godmother's potion room in Shrek. Oh, what a brilliant set. That was actually a brilliant set. My goodness. Also, just an incredible movie, guys. Like, Shrek? Shrek 2? Shrek 2 was so good. I don't remember what Shrek 3 happened in Shrek 3. What happened in Shrek 3? Shrek 3. Shrek the third. Sorry. Uh. Hmm... Shrek learns he will have to rule the land unless he can find an heir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Shrek the Third was kind of, wow. I don't know about all that. Shrek 4, terrible film. Awful film. Bad film. Not good. It was weird. It was a weird time, in my opinion. All right, let's see. Let's see. Where are we at? Where are we at? Definitely want to close it out soon. Okay. Well, let's see. If we have shelves, they'll continue around. So, like, And Mo just said, I'm about to get controversial. I did not like Shrek. That's so funny. We don't talk about Shrek 3. <laughs> Too many sequels will ruin, ruin a franchise. Too many sequels will ruin a franchise if, if that franchise is like, if, if they don't honor, if they don't honor the characters, right? Because people will write a sequel, like a, like a fourth sequel, and they'll just make a character do something so random that's so out of character, and then that's when you break it. Like when you push it to the point of like almost pseudo-parody. You become a parody of yourself in a strange way. Like that happened a little bit with Ice Age, a little bit. But Ice Age was pretty good. The sequels are pretty darn good, you know? They stayed pretty darn true. <laughs> do the roar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do the roar. Good lord. Okay, so the we want some interplay. That's like we want some in and out interplay happening with the cauldron. So so what we're going to do is we're going to you know, like have some some other stuff over here, like some some more baskets, some more pots, some more kind of weird stuff over yon. Maybe, maybe, maybe over here we have like, uh, like the wood is stored underneath. Right? For the oven, that makes sense. The wood is stored. Kelly said Mojo can be on my team then. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, Shrek Shrek was the the OG Shrek was fun. What are you doing in my swamp? I mean it's Mike Myers, dude. Mike Myers plays an ogre. Come on. Come on. Give me a break. So you know what we need here? We need oh, this is the ladder. That's why it has so many. So many rungs. 
So we need a cheese shelf for just cheeses. After all, the chef is French, I think. I think he's French. I watched Flushed Away with my girlfriend the other night. It's so good. La Frog, voiced by the guy who played Leon the Professional. <laughs> so good. So many great jokes in that film. So good. Special order. Special order from Ratatouille. Great. Great sequence as well. Great montage. We're taged up, baby. Hmm. Anyone ever seen the Tenth Kingdom? I have not. Seth says, dude, I freaking love cheese. If you didn't, I don't know, I don't know what you'd be doing other than liking cheese. And he says, speaking of Leon the Professional, is it worth watching? I don't know anything about the film. I've been both recommended and disrecommended from watching it. It's a movie that is like definitely, I'll use the word, of an era. Um, that seems to be pretty fitting for Leon the Professional. Um, of an era is definitely <laughs> adjective I would use 100%. However... Um, Mojo says, God damn, I freaking love Ratatouille unhealthily. Dude, you're allowed. You're allowed to love it unhealthily, 100%. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Leon the Professional. I mean, it's kind of one of those weird movies where, you know, it's not a particularly happy ending, not a particularly unhappy ending. It's like just sort of a strangely neutral film, you know? It's, uh, it's kind of weird. It's kind of a strange movie. Definitely would be sus in today's era of media, for sure. Raises some eyebrows, but it's a classic, you know, and it's a classic for a reason. Um, and there are many classics that are also kind of strange. I don't think you'd be missing out too much if you did not see Leon the Professional. And I don't think that you particularly would be, um, you know, worse off for watching it either. It's a very interesting movie, I'll say that much. Some pretty harrowing and brutal sequences, I'll say that. So it's about an assassin, and it's, you know, graphic as, as it needs to be. So definitely, definitely keep that in mind for sure. Is Leon a French film? I don't know if it's a French film, but the guy's French, so. Oh my gosh. From, from Flushed Away. The, that line Sam in it was so good um with all the French frogs about to go and they're like we leave immediately and the one is like one of the frogs is like what about dinner and he like schlumps back into frame and he goes we leave in five hours gotta love French there were so many good French gags I forgot about how many good French gags there were in in flushed away And, and English gags too. Gosh. Yeah, I can appreciate that movie a lot more now that I'm an adult. Flushed Away had some great some great things that are easy to miss, I think. When you were a child. Okay, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good here. I definitely want to check on some colors, but what's happening in the back? Is anything happening in the back of the frame? Or can I just freaking, do I put more shelves? Maybe I put more shelves for fun. Give it the full sweeping feeling. 
like it's shelves and then like chopping and then shelves and then like cooking stuff and we got the dragons little den over here this all feels pretty coherent to me i think big pipes going around shwing shwing bong bong and i don't know if you guys know fraggle rock the show it's a great fun kids show and they had some great motifs where like the closer the fraggles were the more pipes they saw and like it was just it was just very magical magical show i'm very biased though because i grew up with it and yeah true okay guys tell you what i i am gonna go use the washroom really quick i'm gonna be right back i'm gonna be back in just like a couple minutes and uh we'll throw some color down and then call it all right i'll be right back guys okay cool don't want to jump scare anybody but we're back and we're back oh my gosh <laughs> hold it like i step out for two seconds and half the people leave it's okay it's allowed it's so allowed all righty let's see let's see let's see Big meat hooks and whatnot. Alrighty, let's go. Sick. All right, let's see here. I need like a big element here. I just feel it. Big hanging meat element.
I guess every kitchen needs a sink, right? Just absolutely full of like pots and pans and like all the stuff. I'll make it all bubbly. Do another little sink here. We'll make this block a little bigger, I think. All right, we could edit for days, but at some point we're gonna have to just go ahead and jump into color, and I think that time is now. I think it's now, guys. I'm thinking maybe the chef has like little minion guys that help out. Like little guys. Like if the chef is like the chef is like this. Like big chef. Maybe he needs like little guys to like help him with stuff. Maybe, I don't know, like, like a couple sous chefs or something that are in that way. Like he could be like barking orders from the top and like all the little chefs are like running around making this space a little more alive, you know, like pushing, maybe like pushing a little cart around doing stuff. Like there's a chef doing prep here. Another chef doing thing. Yeah, that makes the space a little more alive, right? Solo. Solo, welcome to the chat, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Solo says, just, okay, just cold question. How do you know Modern Day James? Modern Day James and I met two years ago. We met in New York City, and we just hit it off. I was wearing all denim. He was like Canadian tux. Nice. And I was like, let's go. We met at a sketch meetup in Bryant Park and we just became fast friends and a couple years later and even then I was like two years ago I was like man I've been thinking about starting YouTube thinking about doing this and he was like you should do it you should do it you'd be perfect you'd be perfect and I was like okay didn't do it for like years because you know I wanted to be the best I could be to do YouTube right I wanted to be actually really good wanted to get a lot of professional work under my belt and honestly I think I could have started sooner if I really wanted to but um you know, it's good. It's good to have some some experience under my belt before jumping into the world of YouTube. It all worked out. But yeah, James, James is a homie, man. I got another stream soon with him. That'll be fun. I should do a meetup with him. We should do a meetup like this week. That would be fun. Seth says maybe he has like a nephew who's his, who is his apprentice. Man, I've done too many nephews. <laughs> I've done too many nephew uncle combos. So when you have tertiary characters, because you have primary characters, secondary characters, tertiary characters, like if the chef helpers are like, I think they're more tertiary characters than secondary character maybe maybe one's a secondary character and the rest are kind of tertiary characters tertiary characters become just an icon they're not actually like living breathing three-dimensional beings they're like they're like an archetype right so that's when you can get just dudes who just like do stuff like maybe they have a little hat and their whole 
their whole costume is just like big nose you can't see their eyes and 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 they like a little, little mustache or something like that and they just kind of walk around all right let's chuck some color under this bad boy do a brief time check okay we're three two okay so we're over time a little bit that's fine So first, let's just block out with a grid. Do we even need to block out? Is that necessary? I don't know. Actually, wait, before we do anything, idea. These archways that we have, oops. These archways that we have, I think, would be fun if they were like, still left the ceiling kind of more open. That way. Comes down here. Boop, boop, boop. Boom, boom, bam. Sick. Well, that feels so fun. Yeah, that helps it still maintain its openness. We can move everything a little bit down, I think. It's feeling pretty good. We can move our little friend over. It's just a little guy. Here we could have the sacks of flour. Here we could have more bags of whatnot. Here we could have just a bunch of a uh, bunch of bottles of X, Y, and Z. Could have like containers here of stuff it's good to group your shelves like group the objects theme it out helps visually read more strongly wow this is a busy 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 zone let's zoom out a bit is it still reading yeah we're, we're good we're good so It's gonna be so fun to clean up. I'm actually really excited to clean this up. Uh, for now, we're gonna omit the tiny chefs. But that'll be a fun element to add in later. What is this? It's double, okay, cool.
Okay, the staircase is still a little sus, but that's fine. Okay, wait, let's actually color this so we can hop off. I've got things to do, people to see. Like, actually. Okay. So we're going to do some block-in stuff. We're going to start with, I think, like, a beige color. Just kind of pick from that. Like, it's nice to have a color that you can just sort of uh, change if you need, but you can kind of use it just sort of as a base. You know what I mean? Just like base kind of color we want it to feel rough and kind of like just drawn on the page pretty open I like concepting that way um, so let's see what we got going on here Do the fish guy. This is going to be really fun to do. I actually love the really light butcher blocks. Those are pretty fun. All right, we'll do a gray for the cauldron. We'll obviously darken that up as well. When it's tab. So we're making this very neutral, like not super saturated or anything. We're making it pretty, pretty darn regular because we want to be able to put some lighting layers on top, kind of work that way. When you're doing environments like this, you know, you want to do something very neutral so you can relight it any way you want. If you do values that are too dark or too saturated, they will not be affected by the light around them. Sometimes you have objects that truly are so saturated that they don't interact with light in in a particular way but um here we definitely want things to be 
reacting in particular ways. It's like good, good for the project. So the chef himself, kind of a lightish, lightish pinkish value. Make his hat white, bling. White is a great uh, focal point. So if you can save your really bright brights and your light lights for like those areas you wanna pop, that'll really help you keep your designs distinct. Him and his giant spoon, so funny. The brick, do we want the brick to be red? A red brick oven, does that clash a little? Clashes a little bit. You can have it be a warm gray though. We'll meet halfway with a warm gray. And of course it gets darker as it gets closer to the center because of oven. So get a little bit darker, 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 darker. And then we'll get like darker, darker. And the actual interior. We'll pick a lighter brownish for the face sides of all the wood. So that reads, so I'm gonna make a the tiles, I think pretty much white. And we'll mess around with that and do some cool effects on that too. Don't you worry about a thing. But the white tile for the floor is definitely going to bring this into a whole new vibe, which is nice. It really pushes the kind of like fine dining versus medieval aspect of the design in a really cool way, I think. Something I was really looking for in the original sketch I did and something I want to make sure I maintain here. I'm going to do the floor on another layer just in case. Just in case. Moja well, says, as if he knows, as if he knows, as if all he knows is fine dining and breathing. Honestly, a little bit. Yes. A little bit. I mean, it's such a heavy world, man. I, I worked in a fine dining restaurant for a while. Oof. My goodness, what an experience that was. I would both recommend it and not recommend it. If you like a challenge, yes. If you do not like a challenge, no. So this is gonna be like a cast iron wireframe staircase, but we're gonna let it be pretty minimal. For now, we're not going to get too into it. We're just going to kind of let it be a thing. Draw on what we need, leave out what we don't. Let it kind of be that skinny feeling. That's fine. It's more than fine. All right, so for the outer layer and the kind of cobblestone around here, we're going to use a darker kind of color, obviously. Don't worry, we'll unify all this later. So. <laughs> this is pretty fun, I gotta say. Already, this is just pretty darn fun.
You know, the kind of purpley stone, it's not a bad motif. Oh. It's actually kind of nice. I like it. Okay. Let's add some green. Some of this for the bottles. For the cheese shelf, of course, we have to have a bunch of different yellows for cheeses. One darker, we'll make one more orangey. Variety is the spice of life, or so I'm told. Okay, we're gonna make the stew look really tasty, kind of orange. Some delicious flecks of green here and there. Tasty. Moja says, set design is really difficult, but this is looking really nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, we want it to look nice. So a few things we can do about the floor to make it kind of glean and shine is uh, on top of the floor layer, you can sort of do like a kind of like a pass with just pure white. Then around the other edges, we can do like kind of a, just a darker sinuation. This isn't like real light. It's just kind of fake light, but it adds dimension. And then what you do is just kind of erase that out a little bit. If you want a little edge for your tiles, just get a tiny bit of an edge, hair of an edge, a little bit of an edge. Smidge of dimension. Yeah, set design is really difficult. You know, we'd be giving this a lot more time and, you know, normally we'd, we'd clean it up, like much cleaner. But um, this design, we're going for speed. You're gonna go to the classic black and white tiles or something different. Definitely black and white tiles. I mean, a design like this kind of needs black and white tiles. Um, but then on top of that, we'll do some grungy grunge. on this side for my favorite little our favorite little goober pants Yeah, so one thing I'll do even just right now is on top of everything, I'm just gonna take that kind of beige color, just paint it in like a tiny bit. 
it's going to keep everything super warm. It's going to like lift up some of the things and it's going to give us that kind of storybooky feel that we want. A little desaturated, a little fun. Nothing too crazy. Right, yeah, these are starting to feel like they have some material now, which is nice. Dude, enjoy calling Mom Mojo. It's been real, buddy. Yeah, we're going to end real soon. We're just ironing out the last couple bits. I kind of want to drop light on it a little bit. It'll almost be like he has his little own little oven over there, little dragon friend. I think to make that area pop, we'll make it like a nice blue color. Maybe. Remember, remember, remember. So we're going to do some lighting stuff in a sec. Damn, it's going to be a longer stream, but it's going to be good. We're going to do some lighting stuff that I think is really going to help tie it all together. Teach you guys a little bit about setting up your lighting and whatnot. At least enough, you know. You don't need to know too much. Some light beige flower sacks on this side. Make, make a couple of them dark, maybe just for just for fun. Make these ones up here kind of darker. Klutzy says, how are you going to do everything on the shelf? Are you going to just imply with shape or do little details for everything? So 
when I actually finish this piece, which I will, this is just the kind of color block out. So I make sure everything's working. This is the color block out and also the, um, just like getting a feel for the design. And this is the kind of thing we want to do in like an hour and a bit or two hours so that when we spend the full eight hours, it's actually good, right? So we want to make sure that when we spend that time, we've planned accordingly and our plan is good and we feel good about it. Otherwise, like you're netting out to wasting some time, unfortunately, which we don't want to do. No, we do not. Okay, so we doubled the line art. We only want to double it in a couple areas, so we're going to pull it back on areas we don't want the line art to feel bold. Yeah, when you want emphasis, it can be really good. Let's group all these. Let's warm up the lines. So a great way to warm up the lines is to clipping mask on top and then the actual um, line art itself. I always like to multiply the line art and not have it be like 100%. Have it be like a little fady. Just like a little. Here, I think 70% works. And we can also take some of the red off so it's more of a warm tone. So now that we have this whole thing, let's just make a copy of it so we have it. And uh, we're going to just do a little quick trick here where we add some shading. So usually what we want to do is a multiply layer. Multiply layers are great um, because it's just kind of blanket shadow. but we may actually want to do some linear burn. I don't 100% know. Do we just want to multiply? Also, I don't know if we want to be this purple. Yeah, maybe we want like a cooler, not, a, not so much of a warm shadow. Is the chandelier close to the camera or is it one massive slice of meat? So it is one massive slice of meat. If we wanted it to be close to the camera, we would have drawn it very differently. And the value setup would be very, very different for this. Um, so, okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take a mask and we're just going to pretty much erase out where we want the highlights to hit. So where we want kind of daylight to hit, we're going to just erase on the mask of the multiply layer. That way we can start to lay in the light and where the light is hitting. And we'll go in with a softer brush and uh, do some of the transitions too after as well, which is cool. So it's also gonna be hitting top of the cauldron We'll use the soft brush, like the airbrush, on areas where we know it's going to be a little more soft, <laughs> obviously. And then we obviously want the chef to be well illumined in focus.
Okay, we're gonna do 60% on the shadow, I think. Oof, I'm fading, guys. I'm fading for sure. All right, so we're gonna do the light is not exactly hitting directly around the cauldron. And it's also not gonna hit like this area, so we'll exclude that as well. And then what we're gonna do, and we'll also cut out the foreground stuff just in case. Bringing a scene to life with light is really fun. If anybody wants to learn light and uh, you know learning better lighting scenarios and stuff on Schoolism, Tonko House has a great, a great, great, great course that anyone can take, which is great to do. A lot of great ways to learn light. So we want something like this. So around the cauldron is illuminated with light. The top-down lighting is happening. And um, we get to also have the crackle of the cauldron too when we do that. This, we're going to take a very small brush. Just going to whip. Scoop. So it's hitting the top of the cauldron too, just not as much. Around the edge that would be in shadow. Get those forms looking nice. So going back to our hard brush, we can turn it down. Well, we can just kind of cut the front of the bottles out. So like if, if it's hitting all the fronts of the shelves, the natural light. And then we'll just knock all these back. That'll be fine. And we're going to knock all these back after, which is really fun to do. I'll show you guys how to do that. This is all, there's so many different techniques to do this. Oh, see you, Sam, man. Much love. There's so many techniques to do this. There's no one way to do this. It's just one method of many. All right, let's do a little time check really quick. Okay, I definitely have to go, um, but we're definitely not done with this because uh, what we want to do is a little bit of, I'll just do it quickly. Do some color dodge for the flames. Underneath the cauldron, let's go. And that would be hitting all these highlights and it would be hitting all of the edges of the tiles too and it would actually be fairly visible as the tiles go into shadow it would be hitting the edges as it goes into shadow maybe even some of the tops depending on how bright it is so the sunlight is kind of competing with the warm glow right look how nice that is and then the bottom of these would be getting hit by the glow light. But this requires a lot of work to make this look really good. So we're gonna have to kind of slow it down a little bit. We're just gonna add some yellow to imply like there's some really hot flames going on underneath some super hot fire as the kids would say 
And then you go over it with red again with a soft brush just to get that glow, that boing. Remember, this is very like low fidelity, many techniques to do this, but this is just one. And the actual shadow will knock back a lot of these highlights as well. So if you see it on the mask that we're drawing on, like you're painting white onto the black of the mask. So if we're using a soft brush with white, then it's going to remove the mask like, like a cool eraser thing. It's going to be really, really nice. And then here, we want to use it to soften this edge. On the actual meat, we'll soften it a little bit as it goes down. And then here's a fun trick that you can use. Uh, you can essentially select the mask that you've done and that's kind of the shadow layer but what we can do is we can make a mask with the exact same vibe invert the mask so it's going to show the opposite and we can make that a let's just say let's say overlay and like uh pick like a blue neutral blue oh, oops like a neutral blue color like that so as you can see, that's 100% opacity and really intense, but if we lower it down, like much lower, like much lower, then we can add some of that coolness to it, to those highlights and shadows. And of course, you know, we can go back and forth on this forever, but this is feeling pretty nice. And then we'll knock this back to make this black. Solo says, do people ask you for commissions on Instagram? I will very, very, very rarely take a commission, but people do ask, but I don't. Personally, I'm not big on commissions unless I really like the idea. But, uh, oh, Colin's here. What up, Colin? Came in right as I was about to go. All right, if you want your, your line art to stick, you can always throw it on top again. Add that little extra oomph, you know? Ah, oh, welcome back, Mojo. Hope mom's good. Mom lore. I gotta call my mom actually. I have returned the whole thing as colored. Yeah, so this color job, it's all right. It's like all right. It's not amazing. There's many things you want to do to improve it. I think even even like... Having the oven be a little hot. Would be nice.
Okay, guys, I think we're going to leave it here for today. Um, of course, we can keep going forever and ever and ever. Part of me definitely wants to, that's for sure. But um, we do at some point have to say goodbye to our our wonderful, wonderful ideas. Our wonderful world, wonderful webulous world. Wondering if some of this we want to actually knock back. Not have so much of the purple. Nah, let's rock it. We'll rock it for now. We'll keep working on it as time goes on. But this is pretty darn fun, I gotta say. Well, I've got to say. We could light this forever and ever and ever. Definitely a part of me wants to, that's for sure. But I think we'll leave it here. Guys, this has been so much fun. As always, you're all gems. You're all fantastic for, for joining and for for listening and for being so wonderful. Did you just say Webulus? Of course I said Webulus. Of course I did. How could I not? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right or am I right? Am I right or am I right? Webulus is the way, truly. Okay, we got the chef, the dragon, and we've got the pretty pretty decent drawing for the uh, for the guy. You know, one thing I kind of want to do is I kind of want to just like add in a whole other layer that's just like uh, like to warm it up or to make it feel kind of nice. Even if it's like a little bit. Like an overlay. Like look how nice that is. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I'll fiddle with it. See how it feels. But um, but yeah, you guys are awesome. So let's do our little wrap up, guys. Let's see what we started with. We started with um, just a super loose sketch today. Super, super loose. We did, yeah, we had nothing. We had, we had this. We had like a super loose sketch from the original idea. And from that, we lined it up a little bit more closely. We dropped in some colors and we made it really cool. What's fun about this is if we make another one, we can fill the page and we can get a sense for like how it feels. Which is pretty darn fun if you ask me. Like if I brought it onto like this page. Made another layer and just made it made it white. Then had our other design on the other page, like the full the full one. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> we'd have to do this. We'd also have to remove it from the line art layers, I think. You <laughs> have so many layers, my goodness. Oops. This is great. So jank. Okay. So yeah, if we have the two next to each other, like that's pretty fun. The 
drawing like this is a cool presentation too even on that other one we could we could do something where we have a clipping mask layer we make it levels and we like make the darks a little darker <laughs> maybe not that crazy maybe like that crazy something like that um but yeah that's pretty cool i like that a lot um okay sick 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 all right guys so for those of you who have been watching live you're a champion you're awesome Everybody who tuned in, everybody who popped through, came through, even if even if you joined and you were like, this guy sucks and you left, you're still a champion. You're still a champion and I love you. Truly. And, you know, if you're watching this back from the recording, <laughs> you're also a champion. I'm impressed, frankly confused. But hey, is this world not already so confusing? <laughs> you're pretty great. And if you want to come back for another stream, you can be notified if you wish by ringing the heck out of that bell. You can subscribe and you'll see all the VODs appear in your subscription box. You'll be like, oh my gosh, a new three hours of Gabriel wrestling with a strange, super rough drawing. I'm in. I'm so in. And, uh, you know, if you liked this video or this stream, you can like it. You can click like. You're so allowed. You're totally allowed. And uh, also, if you want to join our our uh, three times a week character design challenge, which we run, where we do a character design in one hour, although recently we've been doing a couple uh, a couple 30-minute challenges as well, where you create a whole character from start to finish in an hour and 30 minutes. It's so fun. Um, then you can join our Discord where we run that. It's a Patreon Discord. So if you join the Patreon, link in the description. You can join us for that three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at around midday EST. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much. And I will catch you on the next one for sure. Ah, people just joined and I'm leaving. What's up? Hello and goodbye, Ella. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one and uh, much love. Peace.